Hey, this is Nolan from Benchmark, and in today's video, I want to explain a couple of things around file types. I want to give you guys that are just getting started with RTK, or just getting started with your total stations, field genius, and maybe just surveying equipment in general, and I want to give you an overview of what your file type options are. What are your options? Which ones make the most sense for you? And is there a right one for the kind of application that you're doing in the field? So this is going to give you a very general overview of how to set up your data collector, get your data in the field, and get the data you need to your clients. So the first thing we got to do before we get into which one's the best for you is we need to understand what your options are. And for our purposes, there's effectively four different kinds of files. There's very basic ASCII files. So that's going to include things like CSV files and text files. And this is going to be a very rough kind of coordinate file. And we'll get to more information on ASCII files in a second. Your next file type is going to be for CAD files. So that's going to be anything where you have line work, where you've maybe got surfaces, where you've got building plans, anything like that. So that's going to include file types like XML files. It's going to include file types like your DWG, DXF, and DGN. DXF, not DXG. DXF and DGN file types. Your third one is going to be more GIS style files. So these are going to have more basic information, but are better for more general mapping applications. So that's going to include file types like shape files. So if those of you who work with Esri or any of the uh, field map style softwares, you're going to be real familiar with that. And then your KML Google Earth files. And then the one final file type is going to be for your raw files. Your raw files are kind of a amalgamation of all of these. It's almost like the black box in an aircraft for your project. It's going to have all of the extra information, including your point statistics, how they were shot, what kind of instrument they were using. It's going to include everything on your file. So those are your four file options here. So the question is, what of these are best for your deliverables in the field? So I've cleared the board here to make room for each of the pros and cons of our file types. And the reason we're going to do that is it's going to make it very clear which is the right file for you to pick depending on what you need out of your data collector and what information you need to bring into your data collector. So the first one we're going to look at here are ASCII files. So again, that's our CSV and our text files. So these are going to be the most simple file type we have. It's going to contain your coordinate information and not a whole lot else. So it's going to bring in your coordinates. So if you have large lists of coordinates, maybe you've got a big staking list you got to do, you want to bring in a bunch of control points, it's probably going to be easiest to do with your ASCII file. So it's great for coordinates and it's great for large lists of points. However, because you're bringing in a simple CSV and text file, you can only contain information related to a single point. So you're not going to have the information associated with your line work. So you're going to lose all of that information if you're bringing this out of CAD. The other thing to consider is this is very dependent on how you have it set up. So if you have a guy in the office that is manually entering these for whatever reason, and he puts in coordinates backwards, or he doesn't check and make sure that all his headers are properly formatted, it can lead to some issues down the line. So yes, you have, you can handle large lists. Yes, your coordinates are all going to be perfectly in there, but you're going to lose your line work and it can become quite clunky and cumbersome to work with. It's not a very clean file type if you've got a lot of information that you need to send somebody. Now, the second file type we're going to cover here are our CAD files. These are going to be the files that you get directly from a CAD software. So MS CAD, Autodesk, maybe Trimble Business Center, any of these that are giving you kind of your entire project plan. So if you need your line work, if you need, you know, the information on your surface, you need to generate a specific surface, all of that's going to be contained in a CAD file. So it's going to have your line work and it's going to have your surface information. All of that is really good. Another advantage of CAD files is that you're bringing it in in a single file. You don't have a huge list of a, you know, hundreds and hundreds of points. It's going to be contained in a nice DXF or a nice XREF surface that is going to be displayed fully in Field Genius with all of your information, including tags, including, you know, as the aforementioned line work, any additional information that the survey crews want you. You can even put notes on the file for people to read. So it's going to have all the information you entered. Now, there are some downsides to having all of the information you'd ever want in a CAD file, and that is there are a million versions of different CAD files. So you're going to have, you know, Autodesk alone has like version 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
on and on and on. And every year they're releasing new features and they're releasing new little assets that are, you know, going to be included. So some of these are not going to be compatible across software. So if you're using something like the aforementioned Autodesk, Autodesk 2013 is going to contain different information that might not be compatible with Autodesk 2010 or 2024. This means that when you bring it into your data collector, your data collector might not be able to bring in all of the information. So you're going to have to do some troubleshooting to make sure that your files are all compatible. So we're going to have some minor compatibility issues when we're using CAD files. The other thing that can be a real issue is kind of a twofold issue. And that is one, when you're getting CAD files, a lot of the time they may be coming from someone who's like an architect or somebody who hasn't had to work in the field. And they're going to give you your project in units that aren't necessarily really fun to work with. For instance, I was talking to a fella yesterday. He was running his project in meters, but the architect sent him the drawings in feet. That's a big difference when you import it into your data collector. And it led to a whole bunch of issues that we had to troubleshoot until we figured out that his file was in feet. So the issue with CAD files is units can be ambiguous. Another really infamous one that we run into a lot here in the office is that instead of giving it in feet, a lot of architects like to work in inches. Another huge discrepancy in units, you can lead to a bunch of scale factor issues if you're not careful and you don't know what you're doing. So you're gonna have to do some localizations often and you're going to need to understand how to do that to avoid running into issues in the field. And our third option here, and it's the option that not a lot of surveyors are going to use, is our GIS file one. So it's the, as I mentioned before, our shape files, so our .shp and .kml files that you can export from Field Genius or that you can export from most survey softwares. Now, these files are great if you're gonna be working with your GIS department in a municipality, if you need to get a lot of mapping information out. So it's going to contain all of the attribute information. It's not just gonna be a description and a code, but it'll be like a description and then all of your attributes that you've associated with that point. So that could be something like if you're surveying a tree, you can have information on how tall the tree is, what the health of it is, how big the tree canopy is, how many limbs it is, how tall it is, all of this information. So it is a great database for those of you that need to collect a lot of attribute information. It's also really nice because GIS files are super common across a lot of different applications. So pretty much everybody can use a shape file. It's really simple to use. You can normally just load it in and you'll have your information. So I'll we'll put in our last little bonus here of widespread compatibility. Now, there is a lot of drawbacks to our GIS files. The first one and arguably the most important one is the fact that these files are very simple. They don't include a lot of information. They're going to include your point, coordinates. They're going to include your description and the, aff the aforementioned attribute information, but it's not going to include any information on the stats of your GNSS shot, any information if you need to do post-processing. It's not going to include any information on your line work necessarily because shape files separate into two files. There's your kind of area and volumes and your line work file and then your point file. So you're going to have multiple different files to use. It gets very cluttersome very quickly. So we're going to put simple file information here. Now, the last downside of this, and it's more related to your KML file than your shape file, is that these shape files are genuinely working in latitude and longitude and not your mapping coordinates. Now, this is, can be a big deal for people who don't understand this uh, off the hop because you can import things into your Google Earth using a KML file and the coordinates might not line up exactly where you expect because they're not using the right coordinates. They're not formatted like you're expecting and it can lead to a whole bunch of issues. So, in general, I would try to stay away from GIS files unless you have a specific need for them. Try to stick with your ASCII files over your GIS files. Unless somebody asks you for a shapefile, try to stay up here. So I'm going to say it can lack information that is necessary. The last file type here is our raw files. Now this is the most specialized of the file types that we have here. And that's because, as I said, it's the black box of what's going on in your project. So if you're out doing a survey, your raw file records everything that you do during that survey. So it's gonna include the exact model of your antenna, the serial number, what reference station it connected to, the points on it. If you're using a total station, it's including all of the traverse information. Now, there's a lot of bonuses to that. If you ever run into issues, you can trace them back in the raw file 
you know exactly where you went wrong, and more often than not, you can use the raw file to reprocess your data and avoid having to go back into the field and fix a costly mistake. You can do it from the office. So a raw file has all of the information to fix your mistakes. Now, the downside to this is you often need specialized software to process this information. It is human readable, so you can go through and read line by line what is happening, but if you have a thousand points, the raw file might be a thousand lines long. It's a lot of information to read through. There is software like MSCAD that will read and process and give you a report of everything that is going on in your raw file. You can edit it using MSCAD. You can use things like Starnet. However, depending on your software, this raw file is going to be proprietary. So there may be some issues bringing it into something like Trimble Business Center. There may be some issues bringing Trimble data into MSCAD. So it's something you want to consider, especially if you're someone who's used to working in raw data. You know, you do traverse reports, you want to reprocess your data, you want to fix things in the field. That's something to keep in mind. So our downside here is that it's often proprietary information and you will need specialized software to process these raw files. So the last thing we want to consider, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is what's the right file type for you. So in general, and this may change depending on what you're doing in the field, this is how what I would recommend you use these files for. So if you're doing something very general, you need a quick report on your information, you need to send it to someone and you don't want to have to worry about compatibility, stick with the ASCII file. I would say 80% of people never have to use anything more advanced than the ASCII file. You can bring it in Excel, you can do anything you want with an ASCII file. The next one I would suggest is CAD files. So these CAD files, your DXF, DWGs, and XMLs, that kind of thing. These are great for people who are doing contracting work, you're looking to put in building, you're doing a lot of construction. Maybe you are a surveyor who's doing some more drawing and you know, you're doing some of your drafting in the field. CAD files are great because of that included line work. That's your big benefit. If you need your line work, stick with your CAD files. For those of you, your GIS files, so your shape and KML files, these are perfect for people who are doing mapping intensive applications. We have a video actually where Renee did some municipal mapping with a Nano 7. GIS files, that's probably what you're gonna end up using the most in that kind of application. If you wanna go with Google Earth, you're stuck on GIS files. That's gonna be your easiest thing. In general though, if you're doing any kind of surveying work, I would tend to recommend to stay away from that and stick with ASCII and CAD files. So the last one is your raw file. So this is going to be for users who are used to working in advanced CAD operations. Those of you who want to do reprocessing in Starnet, those of you who want advanced analytics and advanced statistics on your data. This is a can be a very complex file type to work with and you're going to need a bit of expertise. So if you do need a bit of expertise and a bit of help to get that more advanced data out, reach out to us. We have software packages like MSCAD, like Starnet that are specifically designed to handle this data and give you that information. But for 95, if not 99% of you, these ASCII and CAD files are gonna be perfect for your application and you're never gonna have to go any further than that. With that being said, that's all we wanna show you guys in today's video. So if you wanna learn more about how to set up your project properly, how to get your gear optimized before you get out in the field. Keep watching if you're on our course here or head over to survey-assistant.com where we have these all laid out in a course for you so that you can properly learn how to use your equipment.